Do you think this will be the low point, uh, not the fourth quarter, but the environment that we're in right now? Will this be the low point for the year on, on GDP? Well, I think that's the key question. This, uh, I see the 2.2 the .2 number sort of sets the bar for Q1, whether we'll get over it or under it. Um, as Steve pointed out, I think right now the expectations is that, uh, that, that Q1 may be the low point. Um, we'll, we're, I think, looking to be a little bit under uh, in the current quarter. Some of that just has to do with the government shutdown that, that we're trying to forget from earlier uh, this year. Uh, so it's a timing issue. Things should pick up uh, after this quarter well, a bit. Alex, the slowing that we're seeing, and we know about the, the first quarter uh, historically, but the, what you can attribute to that, is it the effects of, for lack of a better term, is it the effects of the sugar rush wearing off, or is it the global slowdown uh, in either Europe or, or trade friction with China? What is it that, that's causing it? Did, did the tax cut just last for one year? Well, no, the tax cuts didn't last for one year. Um, the, the tax cuts did provide a little bit of an extra boost in the first year relative to, I think, its, uh, its longer-term uh, positive impact. So there's a little bit of fading there, but that's not to say that the tax cuts aren't continuing uh, to improve incentives for investment here in the United States and, and be a positive contributor to the tax bill overall. I, I think it's a multitude of factors. I think, as you said, things are slowing a little bit uh, around the world, um, and I think it's a little bit of a, of a timing effect between you know, the seasonal issues um, that we know and, uh, and the shutdown issues as well. Uh, David, do you share your, uh, your, your namesake of where you are? Do you share Glenn's viewpoint on this, or you're, you're your own man? I mean, he, he thinks that the tax cuts were the worst thing that, that we've ever done, and that he predicted that it would just you know, add to the deficit and, and peter out quickly. Well, I think that um, we don't get much news about the tax cut in today's GDP. What we are looking at is in the rearview mirror. The fourth quarter is a little less robust than we had led to believe. Although, uh, just to help Steve Leisman out a minute, uh, the fourth over fourth <coughs> uh, growth is 3.0 percent. So yes. Kevin Hassett and President Trump can still claim they had a 3 percent year last year. I think the big question is uh, what's happening now. First quarter, about one and a half. Is that an aberration or slowing? I think the tax cut was a mistake. Um, I think it did add some a sugar high, as you said, in the first quarter. What's really the big question is, will it increase business investment? Will it work as, as intended so we have faster growth, faster productivity growth in the future? If you want to be honest, we don't really know yet. I think there's some conflicting signals. I'm skeptical, but people who think we have a verdict on the tax cut already are just talking their prior views, not the evidence. Hey, Alex, we've had this big pop in intellectual property and software, up 10.7 percent, uh, whereas the equipment numbers have been eh. And some of the guys who are proponents and supporters of the tax cut said that's what they might have expected, because equipment spending was already uh, uh, advantaged in prior uh, expensing uh, tax uh, changes that have been made, but it was the software one that's new, and you're getting this big pop. Plus, there could have been the possibility of companies moving over to the United States because of the more favorable tax treatment, their intellectual property. Uh, what's your read on whether or not the effects of the tax cut are showing up through the intellectual property and software angle, which is up a very healthy 11%? I think that's one of the pieces where we are seeing it. I think we're seeing it in both numbers. I think we're seeing it um, in the business fixed investment as well. I think that one of the issues here is, to some extent, um, uh, some of my friends have oversold the expectations around the tax bill. Um, mm -hmm. so, so I think that creates this disappointment when we don't see, you know, uh, plus three point uh, quarters every quarter. I think that uh, we're, we are seeing this channel work where the user cost of capital is coming down and investment's been uh, strong. It's been a positive contributor uh, to GDP. But let's not oversell this um, either. I mean, this is something that's going to play out uh, incrementally over a longer period of time. That's the intent of the policy. Alex, um, it, it, is it flawed? I, like, I listen to David, and I, I don't know, maybe everything I, I've, I've always been taught is wrong, but if you make U.S. corporations more competitive globally and, and they have more after-tax dollars for whatever, whether if, even if it does go into buybacks, whatever it goes into, or if we have repatriation, if, if you don't have the you know, the, uh, the motivation to leave everything um, out of the United States. How doesn't, why do we still argue whether that's a positive thing, uh, David? Why, why is that something that you, you wouldn't want to do just logically? I don't, I don't, is it wrong? All, all that thinking is flawed? No, I look, I think there's two things. One is there's a question of, 
did the details of uh, three things. Did the details of the plan work as intended? You know, the Wall Street Journal had a good story the other day about a number of multinationals because the the way these various uh, overseas tax breaks work, the so-called guilty, G-I-L-T-I, -I, that it seems that some of them feel that it's not working as intended, so uh, that's a problem. It wasn't well designed. Secondly, it's a question of degree. Um, I don't think anybody argues that cutting taxes on business uh, is basically leads them to make more money, and if they make more money, they're more likely to invest. It's a question of how much. And then the third thing is, what's the cost of the thing? Do you think that long-term deficits are a big problem? In which case, you're a little reluctant to have big revenue cuts when you're unwilling to cut spending, particularly in an aging society. So I think it's a matter of degree, not direction. You think that, that the bang we got for our buck with the previous $10 trillion in, in that last administration, those policies, p take your pick. You think that, that the tax cuts for corporations are inferior to the type of stimulus that the, the shovel-ready I, th I think um, they're for clunkers. I mean, I, I don't. I think understand. they're totally different. We well, had one's, one's we had together, a terrible because had... one's ten trillion and one's one trillion. No, it's totally different because we had ten percent unemployment, and we had a classic and Keynesian style. And we had the slowest recovery from stimulus. a deep recession that, that we've had in right. post. Right, and you think it would have been you think it would have been better if they had done. Uh, less. I think that it would have been better think, if they didn't do Obamacare the first two I, years I think when, the, when they uh, were dealing with the crisis. I think it would have been better if we hadn't had the pain of the sequester, which cut government spending at an inconvenient moment. Right now, there's no the reason to have a tax cut now is as the as the proponents say, not to juice the economy when you have 3.8 percent unemployment, but to see if you can do things that lead to faster investment and faster productivity growth. And I think Alex is exactly right. Well, well the it, proponents oversold it. And they, they are trying to look at short term. There's lots of reasons that businesses invest in the first quarter. Well, Texas if we get, is if only we get part the, of it. If we get unemployment to stay where it is, that, that should bring in some wage gains for the income disparity that, that, that we've been hearing about for, for 20 years. Alex, do you have, have a response to, to that? It, yeah, I mean, I think that, you know, that we're, there's no question we're seeing a, a, a great labor market today. Um, uh, and I, I agree with David that the, the objectives here, um, from a policy perspective, are about the economy in the long run. And what we're, what we're trying to do with tax reform is permanently increase the capital stock, increase productivity of, of workers, and make the U.S. economy uh, that much larger you know, um, when it reaches the steady state. 10 years from now. There is obviously a political temptation um, to kind of dig into the, the moment and talk about um, whether it's uh, bonus checks or, or, or the, the latest statistics and, and try to attribute that to the tax policy. Um, and, there's, and there's some validity to that. I think we are bigger and as an economy because of the tax policy, but that's a secondary, uh, second order of, uh, of, of importance because what was the intent behind the design was to make this a more competitive place, not for this quarter, next quarter, but for this decade okay. and next decade. All right, Alex, uh, did we do 3% last year or 2.9? Uh, both of you, we, we, I, I'm still confused. If you, if you measure it, if you measure it, I know from the difference is. But what, quarter, what do 3%. I say? What do I hang my hat on What'd if I had bet? a bet? What did you bet with him? What was the bet? Was it Q4, Q4, or well, year over year? Three, which is more relevant, Alex? Oh, it's definitely Q4 <laughs> over Q4 is the more relevant measure. It is? If we want to know what things are going, how things are trending. Q9 mm -hmm. was the annual, and 3.0 was the Q4, Q4. Well, so if I get three from you, then I ain't paying for Goldsby. What, 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 what's I, your? I, I'm not selling your bets, Joe. You have to do that on your own. <laughs> All right. I want to know why, if the economy is so good, the bond market is so pessimistic. That's for I don't know. Show. Talk to Germany, will you? Uh, uh, all your entitlement state economics are working real well over there, David. Uh, maybe <laughs> maybe we're stuck down at they can't even get inflation. Can't get anything going over there. They have, they have a balanced budget. I thought you'd love that, Joe. <laughs> All right.